Hey guys, so um, there's a bit of a change. I thought I would um, do a little bit of a commentary for this one. It might be good, might be bad. Who knows? We'll see. Uh, so yeah, with this, I started with a shape using the shape generator plugin, um, which I've not used in ages, but it just gave me a sort of initial uh, kind of wing shape at the beginning and then and went from there really. So the general sort of design language for this, I wanted something a bit more kind of round and um, yeah sort of strange looking I didn't want anything too traditional spaceship shape wise so yeah so here we're going into uh, we're basically using dream UV to UV unwrap this and uh, attaching Atlas materials which I've made a big collection of and uh, they're available on my patreon and it's like basically a project file with loads of them in and it makes it really easy to apply them it's like a palette so um, you just take them from one that project and copy it in and then you can apply it to the thing so that's what I'm doing now I've applied it and I'm just using the plugin to sort of create these faces um, and UV unwrap them automatically uh, there are quick ways of doing it I quite enjoy slowly kind of doing it manually the earlier in the process that you do it the easier it is because you've got less geometry to do and you can copy and paste more um, but yeah, I enjoy, I quite enjoy that process. If I'm having a stressful day, it's kind of nice to kind of go through and just, um, I've got it set up on a shortcut on my keyboard, so I can just select the faces, hit the shortcut, and it creates these sort of panels using the thing, and the materials are pre-made and ready to go um, in that project, so it makes life easier. So yeah, at this point, we're kind of just getting a feel for it, and that was kind of frustrating me, I think, at this point. Um, cause it just looked, everything looked too busy. Um, the texture was too busy. Um, there's two different textures on here, but the, with the roughness being, um, set to an image, the kind of shininess, all those shiny bits are kind of just a little bit too busy for me. So I think we rectify that later, but at this point we're just kind of looking at general shape because often it will be the case that I'll just delete, um, delete what I'm doing <laughs> if I'm not happy with it so and that's normally around this point I'm kind of getting to the point where I'm not sure whether I want to finish it or whether it's going to be good um yeah so yeah just more of this sort of picking up faces um unwrapping them uh, making these panels trying to make it feel metallic um yeah and that's sort of it really for the beginning of this and again we're just trying to sort of still get a feel for it like the general shape at this point is okay but obviously you'll see in the final image the design language changes quite a lot so here i'm bringing in another model that i made and just taking the texture from that um and just yeah we're playing a little bit with shine here to see whether this will look better more shiny or matte so again just play with the light i'm using physical starlight plugin as well to sort of um it's generating the sunlight uh, and the sort of HDRI sky, which you can't see because it's set to transparent, but um, it's a really good plugin. I think you can do it in Blender now. I think you can do it in the nodes in the compositor, but at the time, uh, that plugin was really good. Um, and I still use it quite a lot, even though I don't think it gets used for the final thing, but it's good for just lighting things up. Here we've sort of set the roughness to, to be a bit more matte, um, which is often the route that I go. I don't do a lot of shiny stuff. I kind of like that scratch built model look bringing in some other parts from my kit bash here so that's my kit bash library again all available on patreon i think pretty much everything that i'm using here is available for the download there we're also using like an ambient occlusion um thing on the material which i think is automatically already applied it's kind of giving us that dirty look kind of in the gaps and stuff which is um really useful for making it kind of look lived in um, again, still not really fully happy with the shape here, and, and at this point, I think, yeah, we bring in, this is sort of where it, sort of, I start becoming more happy with it, I have to play with spheres, um, it seems like a slightly more unique shape, um, really fun as well to copy and paste and stretch them and play, so doing the same thing, sort of creating those panels, UV unwrapping it using Dream UV, um, yeah, and just copying and pasting and stretching them and playing around with them until it goes too far and then bringing it back it's like often the way that will work just trying to treat it like a sketch uh red eyes 
here, always fun. Just play with a couple of emission things. I don't do a lot of stuff with emission textures, but things like, yeah, sensors or like lights on the front of something, and they work quite well. Um, yeah, I'm just trying to get the kind of balance right with the, with the um, shape. And now I'm just like dragging things out, just trying to make it feel a little bit more practical. Doubling that up as well, just copying and pasting it. Lots of, lots of duplication. Always fun. Um, again, more stuff from the kit bash. So it's kind of nice having those things there. I'm like, oh, I can just have not used this thing in a while. It might work really well. So like these guns, for example. Um, always good fun to use those. And again, just positioning things, trying things in different places. Going back to the rendered view. Um, pushing it too far and then like bringing it back is mostly how I work, you know, just bringing in things, trying in like this thing never gets used, I don't think I think I delete it, um, just trying it in different places. I think the whole process of this took around three hours, maybe, um, I think a lot of the time spent at the end sort of like playing with the lighting and stuff, but again here just playing with different kind of design language and mixing it up and adding those aerial type things um, that I don't understand the utility of but they're there <laughs> they look cool um, so at this point yeah we're kind of getting there now with the model I think at this point I'm sort of fairly happy with it now I'm trying to work out how we're going to photograph it and turn it into a picture because it's quite a small kind of petite model so I'm trying to work out what we're going to do this is quite a useful trick sort of painting in using the bezier curve like painting in these cables um, I did a tutorial on this again on my Patreon. Um, it's just a really good way of kind of adding life a bit of random geometry as opposed to sort of like the computerized geometry, like being able to draw something in and just painting it in the gaps, just making it feel kind of random. Um, more of these things because they also look cool. Duplicate the eyes. And then, yeah, just sort of doing final touches really on the, on the general geometry. But from this point, nothing really massively changes with the model, I don't think. Now it's a case of just looking at it, trying to work out like what angles is this going to look good from. Um, often I'll do a sort of mini render halfway through just to see how we're looking, make sure there's nothing weird going on. Um, yeah, now time to play with lighting, which is fun for me, like coming from a cinematography point of view. Um, kind of really fun to, to start playing with the lighting. Um, and here we're just, yeah, toying with colour temperature, just like mixing kind of cold and warm colours. Um, it's always fun. I think at this point I was thinking, oh, maybe it'd be an indoor scene. Here I'm using a plugin called Fluent, which is a paid plugin, but um, I found it worthwhile. It's really good for creating cables. Um, it does cloth simulation, lots of sort of Boolean tricks. Um, I use a very small amount of the plugin. I mostly use it for cables. Just speeds that part of the process up. Um, more cables, just playing with the kind of density of them. This looks like it's really quick, it's actually slower than you think. Like, I think if it was even quicker, there'd be more cables. I think I got bored of that of <laughs> doing it, so um, I didn't go too crazy. Again, here, just trying to work out what we're gonna put above it, like, what is it gonna be? Um, I think around here, I've decided it's gonna be in space rather than interior just because I didn't have the time really to, to build like a big building around it um, so yeah I think this is our sort of final render on a transparent background so I'm going to add in the sky later um, I also do a pass of it with red and blue um, the same thing just like change the color of the material so later on when we get to the painting stage we can layer them up and I can just erase parts of the top layer and then reveal bits of the red which you'll see in a second when, when we get into procreate um but yeah we do a blue pass and a red pass um this means i have that as an option you can see here like what i'm doing is i'm just ripping out the top layer and then revealing the layers below and it kind of everything looks right texture wise and lighting wise um it's just a seems like a more simple way of doing it than like painting in the red um and that's why I sort of, yeah, at this point I'm just doing like edge highlights as well, just to kind of pick out a little bit, make it feel less like a 3D render, more like a drawing. Um, yeah, and then some sort of blooming over the edge. 
a little bit of yeah kind of image manipulation after that and we're sort of good to go so hopefully that's been helpful um yeah i'll be doing another one soon thanks a lot